This is uh, from Bob Nightingale of USA Today. The White Sox have made a formal offer to Manny Machado. Okay. It's characterized as a serious offer, likely closer to $200 million than $300 million, which would not be enough to sway Machado to get on a flight from Chicago, from Miami to Chicago for a press conference. The, the White Sox have yet to make a formal offer for Harper, but they remain in constant contact, meeting six weeks ago in person with Harper, his wife, and Scott Boris. According to Bob, if Ma Machado had his wish and the offers were relatively close, friends believe he'd choose the Yankees, his favorite team growing up in Miami. Yet if the Yankees were convinced that Machado was coming their way, they wouldn't have even bothered with shortstop Troy Tulowitzki, signing him to a no-risk insurance policy. If Harper had his choice, with the offers being close, friends believe he'd pick the Dodgers. The Dodgers may have interest, but haven't publicly declared they will even make a short-term offer. If it's solely about the money with Harper and Machado, it may be between the Phillies and the White Sox. While nothing has yet transpired, at least the landscape is starting to become clear. So there you have it. Hmm. Uh, the money that we all thought was going to be thrown at these two guys, not quite to this point. The largest offer he may get, I'm talking about Harper, is the 10-year $300 million he turned down from the Nationals. Yeah. That included deferred payments, according to Nightingale, which do, would devalue the total to about $284 million. So, so there's supposed to be, you know, at least when it comes to Machado, a week after the new year. So that's tomorrow or next week at some point. So again, it looks like the agents got it wrong. That these guys were going to get a windfall, and it's just not out there. Teams do not want to spend that kind of money. Because what does it guarantee me? If I give Harper or Machado $300 million. One thing it guarantees the White Sox is relevancy. All right, so but the you're Yankees relevant. The Yankees and, and the Phillies it probably makes them the favorite. But All right, relevancy. But I don't know if that gives the White Sox any chance at a championship for the length of the contract, does it? I know it's a wide-open division, but those teams need a lot. All right? You put more fans in the seats, you get a few more people watching you. It's not going to make the White Sox more important than the Cubs. So right. are you going to get your money back? Are you telling me that between ticket sales and revenue taken in through television and radio is going to compensate for $300 million over the next 10 years? It could sell some tickets, I'm not, but, but there are some teams that how many more tickets can you sell? I mean, would the Yankees go up to a $4 million attendance? No, I think the Yankees do it. Dodgers do it because they want to win a championship. White Sox are doing it. You said for relevancy. All right, a little relevancy, but how does that pay back the $300 million you're going to have to pay them? If I'm not going to win anything... But if you're relevant and you win games, you, I mean, they, they drew for the first time ever, not the first time ever, but like in 20 years, under 20,000 a game last year. Right. So what does... So let's say they get up to 28,000 a game. Okay. And that's uh, eight times uh, 82, uh, 81. Uh, that, that would be... 640,000 extra seats. All right. Right? At $10, a uh, hundred bucks per person. You know, mm -hmm. what they Say spend. Say something, right. It's a lot of money. You make up a lot. No, you make up a lot, but does that mean that that's going to continue throughout the rest of the contract? Don't know. When, if you're not winning, right. I mean, I don't know what, what was the Nationals' attendance. I mean, they were Nationals winning. did well. They were a winning team, but if, if Harper is raking and is in the contention for American League MVP and the team's 10 games under 500, are people going to pay to just see him play if the team is lousy? Right. I don't know if he makes them a champion. He couldn't make the Nationals a champion. I'm not trying to kill him. I'm just saying that this is, it's not basketball where I can add the best player in the league and instantly make, make the playoffs and make a run. If, if, I can add the best player in the league and, and, and mean what, five more wins during the course of the season? If these guys, Don and Peter, don't, I'm not talking about home run, if they don't hit a grand slam, then there's going to be a work stoppage when this collective bargaining agreement is up. And I don't know what they're negotiating against, because what they're negotiating against is the fact that GMs are smarter than ever. And they're not going to spend money like this, no matter how good the player is. But the thing is, is that it's just, it's baseball, Michael. Like, everybody wants to get the big contract. Like, basketball, you pay all this money, right? LeBron James, KD, they all make fortunes, right? Because I can add... Kevin Durant to the Knicks, and they'll make the right. playoffs, and they'll make a run every single in baseball, year. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way in baseball. But for these two guys, though, that play about 160 games a year, it will make them better teams. Will it make them champions? Well, no. 